Hello and welcome to Rotted Reviews, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the 2020 movie from Taiwan, The Bridge Curse, currently streaming on Netflix. Now this movie was directed by Lester Sheehy, and it basically takes place on a school campus in which students of this school are participating in a cursed ritual. You see, every leap year on February 29th, so every four years, at the stroke of midnight, if you happen to be on this particular bridge sitting down, blindfolded and you hear bells you take the blindfold off you walk to the steps at the end of the bridge you start walking up them while counting them they're supposed to be 13 but if this particular set of circumstances happen there could be 14 and if there are 14 then by gum don't turn around because if you do then the ghost is right behind you so, this was an interesting one for me to kind of absorb first of all as far as the whole cursed ritual kind of thing goes well, two things. First of all, the whole concept of the missing stair, uh, you know, there being one more than they're supposed to be, is not a foreign concept. I witnessed that in the third entry into the Whispering Corridor series from South Korea with the wishing stairs. It was one of the principal items in there. But second of all, this was such a convoluted series of instructions for this curse. You know, just get, you know, get to the 14th stair do the hokey pokey and fart four times and maybe, you know, they'll be, it's just ridiculous and <laughs> the uh, extravagance, you know, one of the things about cursed rituals is the simplicity of them. It's supposed to kind of be something that you ordinarily wouldn't do, just kind of stumble ass backwards into, but at the same time, simplicity is a little bit key, you know, Bloody Mary, so on and so forth, you know, saying Candyman in the mirror five times. Uh, there's a certain elegance to the simplicity of it. <clears throat> uh, but that being said, just taking the movie itself, let's forget the ritual and just kind of look at the movie itself. Unfortunately, uh, I mean, obviously when these students do this, things go wrong and they start kind of uh, being subject to this haunting and getting picked off. Um, but this was basically for me, having watched it now, nothing more than spooky shit the movie. There really wasn't a whole lot to go on here. And I thought it was actually kind of odd. Uh, there was a, a moment in which I was watching this where I just kind of, I really felt like there should have been more depth than there was. And I, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why it wasn't doing that, why it wasn't focusing on character development, why it wasn't focusing on, uh, you know, figuring out the nature of the curse to overcome it kind of thing, why it was as sparse as it was in any real meat beyond just creepy scenes of watching these kids get picked off by this haunting spirit. And then it finally revealed itself with the twist. <laughs> oh no! Oh no, I know there's a twist! And I think it's important for me to say that because that becomes a very critical element of this movie. You see, this is one of those twists. Again, I'm not going to spoil the movie. I'm not going to even spoil what the twist is. But what I will say is that it is predicated upon by having the rest of the movie structured in such a way that it services the twist. If you think of The Sixth Sense, there was a lot of storyline activity that had to function in service of the twist ending. Here's the fundamental difference between The Sixth Sense and The Bridge Curse is The Sixth Sense let the storyline stand on its own as well. If the twist had never happened, it still would have been a pretty decent spooky creepy ghost story with interesting characters and interesting aesthetics and a good storyline but this movie set itself up so that the entirety of the film was in service of the twist and it forgot to actually make a decent movie prior to that in fact the very nature of this twist which i will absolutely cop to the fact that it was clever i didn't see it coming it was smart and it was interesting but the entirety of the movie really did have to be completely restructured to service it and it doesn't really work that way a twist that restructures and yes restricts the plot purposefully doesn't work you basically wind up with a movie that has nothing but creepy moments to it, but no real substance. And then by the time the twist happens, it's at the end of a film that I've already checked out on. And this is the case of The Bridge Curse for me. I had already checked out on it. By the time the twist came around, I thought, well, that's interesting. That's unique. I can see why they did all of this, but was the payoff worth it? Nope. 
I would have rather have had a decent movie. So at this point, I'm going to go and throw up the scores here. As always, four different categories, each one worth up to 25 points for a total possible score of 100 points. And I'd be lying if I said I thought this was a bad movie. As far as creepy shit the movie goes, there was some creepy shit here. There was a lot of great moments. You know, I think that that's something that uh, Zack Snyder gets a lot, that, that he doesn't make great films, he makes great moments. Sometimes those cobble together to make a good film, sometimes not. But this was a movie that kind of, I felt the same, that this had some really great moments in it as far as bringing some, you know, good tension, good kind of uh, ghostly apparitional scares and you know jump scares even yes yes i'm afraid there's plenty of those in this it did a fairly serviceable job and this was a movie that actually had a very unique visual style that i thought was beautiful i just wish that there had been more substance to it so really where i landed was this was not a movie that i would highly recommend but it's not so bad that I would dissuade anybody from watching it. If this is something that you have your heart set on, if you see it on Netflix, it looks interesting to you, you're just in the mood for a movie from Taiwan, a good Asian horror film, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. But if somebody is coming to me and saying, Mike, could you please recommend to me a good Asian horror movie? This would be nowhere near the top of my list as far as recommendations go. So that should about do it. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing my next review on Thursday. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.